and Joshua Akamba is also joining us. You wanted to make a clarification, Mr. Joshua Akamba. Good morning and good morning to your cherished viewers. How are you doing? I'm well. I thought that you were going to ask me the reckless comments of the president in Atenov when he had actually pronounced judgment and sentencing of uh, Jatuko is not of Jatuko. All right. So, so, so the clarification, the, clari the clarification I'm seeking from you yes. is that um, Akosia Menu says you stated categorically that mm. you had given money for transport to some voters. True or not? False. I'm sure that this name you mentioned, I don't know her. Um, I think that it was. I saw something on your news item or a, a headline. Um, I don't know whether it's your news item that Joshua Kamba um, claims that we're sharing, we shared money. I think that what happened is that I was in one of the strongholds at the panel of the MTT. Mm -hmm. And then one MP, and then the other one is the uh, Ridley. I will know him. He's the uh, other other MP. And then uh, Honourable Intim Fojo, mm -hmm. the Deputy Minister of Education. Indeed, they came with a car packed with money. So they were sharing. But what they did was that they they would give some other people thousand Ghana cities and some other people two two fifty. So I got the information, and by the time you get there, I'm sure your reporter even saw it. By the time you get there, they will take your card, your voter ID card, they record your name, then they will give you the money, then you go and vote. So when I was prompted by it, and they were doing it just close to the polling station, so I moved to them. And then when I was there, your reporter came to me. So in trying to question those MPs for what they're doing, then... Uh, your reporter, no, at the end, one of the MPs said, no, 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 you two are sharing money, you two are sharing money. Mm -hmm. yes, at that time, there was a young man who had come, he said he was coming from Accra. Mm -hmm. And then he came purposely to vote. And then he has to go back. Did you so say I'm that you were him. sharing money or did you affirm or confirm that you were sharing money or not? Please explain that. No, mm -hmm. I, I never confirmed that we shared, we shared money anyway. I'm just explaining to you what happened, the, the situation, what happened. So when I was trying to talk, the MP, the MP was saying, no, 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 no. I said, okay, okay, you leave. Let me, can I explain? Can I finish talking? And they will allow me to explain because I had, I had told the whole world that these guys were sharing 1250 depending on who you are and where you were coming from. And that is how they be. It's a shame. I mean, come on, they should go and lick their wounds and then re replant because this is a referendum. And the MPP is coming. The, the MPP is coming down. The NDC is coming to save this country. This sharing of money of my NDC. Where are we going to get the money? Come and see how people are working on money in uh, yeah, Asinov. So MPP are putting money down, and people are working on money. That's exactly what they were doing. I mean, we saw it. They were they pitch camp in big big houses, and money flowing everywhere. Mister Mr. Kamba, Mister Mr. Kamba, exactly did you yes. did you? affirm or confirm to us that, of course, uh, if there's money is for transport, did you do that in any way? I said, yeah, that's exactly what I just explained to you, that at a point, somebody walked to me and said he wanted money to go back to you after voting. And again, again, I don't even know whether he's empty to an NDC, but I didn't know the person. And that's exactly what I said. Okay. So go review your thing and see whether what I said about, I said, yes, there was a student who had come and I don't know whether he's NDC or anything, but the guy was so frustrated that he has to go back. So if I'm giving him something to go and pick a car, what has that got to do with the money that they shared around? All right. Uh, so, so, so you gave the person money? I gave it yes, after voting, not before, before voting. After the person had voted, he came and was lamenting. Somebody, I think somebody even walked to him, brought him to me, and so this guy said he's coming. He came to vote. He came and voted. I don't know whether he voted for NDC or MP. I didn't even know. Yeah. The okay. Person. All right. But you gave the person money. So so I think that's that confirmed. Is. All right. Thank you very much, Joshua Kamba. Now, Nanaya Janto, what do you make of all this? <laughs> no. I've always known that you are sitting here. What do you make of all this? What do I make of all? Of all that has transpired, um, the sharing of money and the explanation <laughs> that is for transports and 
what may have happened on that day. Roland, thank you very much. And um, let me say good morning to your cherished viewers and good morning to my comrades of the CPP and good morning to my sisters. Um, you see, monetization of politics is something that we should all look at. There are accusations and counter accusations mm. about who paid what, who didn't pay what. There should be some guidelines on what is transport and what is um, inducement. Because everybody is saying they gave something for transport. But at a point, when um, His Excellency John Germany Mahama gave money for transport, they said she should be taken to uh, OSP. To investigate. So now the time has come for us to have a dispassionate conversation about transportation. Because if you give somebody 200 Ghana cities within a community where there are polling stations, I don't think there is any pragya that takes 200. So what are you telling the person to use the extra money for? Yeah. If somebody comes to you and says they are hungry, they need money. If you were not there, wouldn't they eat? Granted that there was no election, they would have eaten. They would have found a way to look after themselves. So what kind of atmosphere was created at the place that gave the impression that some free money is going around so we should also partake? What kind of business does MPP do or NDC? They should tell us to know how these monies are shared. Of course, NDC is not in power. They will do their, um, we all do, we are also not in power. You do fundraising all around. The constitution does not allow you to fundraise outside the country. But once you are in government, you should be more prudent because all eyes are on you. All eyes are on you that the kind of money you are using, where is it coming from? I heard people saying that the IMF money, if they are using the IMF money, then they are, it's theirs, so they have to chop. You heard that? Yes. I was watching TV. I wanted to go back. They make such utterances. Yes. I mean, I wanted to go there as an observer, but something, an emergency happened and I couldn't make it. So the issue of sharing money, it is of interest, it should be of interest to everybody. It should be of interest to us. Because then it makes the business of politics very expensive. And if these such foundations are laid, then it is problematic. Why don't we um, find buses from polling station to polling station so that no cash is given around? Because everybody designates cash as... Um, transport and feeding. Of course, it's legitimate cost. I always say that in politics, you have legitimate and illegitimate cost. Like the hotels that were booked, that is legitimate cost. You have to do your rallies. You have to um, rent some podiums, and that's legitimate cost. You need money. But to give cash directly, and people flying around that they have been given 200. And that one, it was like very continuous. The, the word is not coming, but you found, we found three spontaneous. people. Spontaneous. You found three people, all of them saying that you were given 200. Three people cannot lie. And um, people like Joshua Kamba and Beatrice, they also said they gave money. There was some also cohesion that I voted, I have to be. So we need to change that mindset and let voters know that they are voting out of conscience. Mm. They are voting for a change. They are voting to make sure that Ghana is great. And I believe NCC has a lot of work to do because gradually the way it's becoming expensive, then you see all manner of corruption. Because I always say that when governments take the money from us, when they are in power and they take the money, who do they give the money to? Under the guise of using it for elections and running the party and all that. And they also use it for themselves. So, I mean, truly, I think that we are all talking like this. We are all um, saying it's, it's, this one has done that accusations here and there. 
but I believe there is the need for us to have a national dialogue on monetization. On the other aspect, I think that the NDC coordinated well. When I saw um, Totobi Kwache there, he's a, he's a security guru and somebody that is good. And I said, these people mean business. The kind of cohesion that went on, I'm like, are they like this every time? You didn't see the factions that we always hear of. That this one belongs here, that one belongs there. It was as if everybody was there. But everybody is saying it's an example of 2024. There are other actors in the political space, that you understand. The CPP is also there. There are other parties which are there. So you cannot say that this one election shows that is an example because it's hard work. If you do not work hard and you revel in one constituency, because in that one constituency, everybody has a free hand to go there. All the MPs were there because they were not running any election. Mm. Do you get me? Mm. So they all went there. Some were pulling agents. They were diligent. But in 2024, when they are running their own elections... They won't be there. They won't be there. So what is needed then? What is needed? Me, I say that the elections are won at the polling station. Elections are won at the polling station. So every party needs the diligence to, I mean, be at the polling station. Sometimes the kind of people they recruit for the polling station... It is it, 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 it's, it's worrisome. And also, you see, the MPP, what they do is that they really use their young girls and boys, so the Tescon guys, those the who are in MPP. I, the MPP, the youth, those who are in IT, those who are, they use them a lot. In the various universities. In the various or tertiary, institutions. And tertiary institutions. I do not see, we use our test charts. The NDC should also try and help their team. The thing, we use our test charts a lot. So they should also try, because the NDC, the M MPP, they have a... She means election. Day. Election. They have, they have a, a, a coordinated approach towards TESCON for elections. They don't play with that. So I think that everything should be on a level playing field. But as for monetization, I mean, it is worrisome. We are still here talking about, but everybody is talk, forgetting about the violence that happened. Yes. I mean, nobody is talking about it. In the morning, somebody lifted a stone, a big stone, mm -hmm. and wanted to hit a woman with it. The police did very well, but at a point, I saw the police standing as if they were careful how to approach. Mm. Thank God they did not escalate into something else. There was a gunshot of a car. Mm. I don't know if somebody's car. Mm. And the no, Pablo, Sabi yes, Jenfie. Pablo and Sabi Jenfie. And the, yes, and these are yes, these are the, things. The, the ones on the screen. The, uh, this on for the uh, this Malik Basintali. And, and yes. this this was caused by macho men who were brought by Nan Nanabi, the national organizer of the MPP. And this these, is for yes, George so Pariado. The, the, this car. Daniel, show the video of. Uh, of somebody who is dressed in a military fatigue, yes. being hauled away by the police. And then I ask a, 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 a question. Uh, okay. Okay. So, so that aspect we are not talking about. After monetization, it is endemic that we need to uproot. But we need to deal with some of these issues. It, we are just lucky that nobody died. God was on our side. Nobody died. But these gunshots, granted that somebody was sitting in the car, what would have happened? Yeah. The person would have died. And this issue of macho men and... So, for oh, example, somebody is dressed in a military fatigue. Mm -hmm. The other time I put a video on social media. I, I and then, no, please wait. Let, let me, let me make a clarification. I put a video on social media where the police in a vehicle, because of their special units that they have, whether for anti-terrorism, anti-robbery, I asked a senior police officer, and they, they were dressed... Um, like hoodlums with um, mm. braids, etc. And I ask, is that how you deploy them? He said, that's not how you deploy them. And so you take the public seeing this and somebody who is dressed on election day like this. How would the public get to know? The public is the ordinary voter mm. in a polling station. Get to know whether this person is a special unit assigned personnel of the national security 
or the Ghana Police Service or any other security services brought on to maintain the peace. Now, how do you even deploy such people? Please, national security has no business in this place. National security, who would, if they deploy, they shouldn't deploy as uniform. National security is there to gather intelligence. So if anybody is in uniform and says, I am national security, when the police is around, you needn't to be there. The police is supposed to maintain internal peace. And when we are having an election, it has to do with internal peace. So the national security will be amongst the people in plain clothes, gathering information. I don't see anywhere. It's only Ghana where people go around and say that we are national security. A national security person can come and sit in front of your house and you will not even notice. He, he might even come like a madman. You will not even notice that the person is from national security. The national security is for intelligence. It is not for um, grounds and roots work. So if somebody is, is dressed like this, and this even the person looks like a clown. So how, how can you say that such a person is, is with the national security? And national security, when they are moving around, they are not visible. This one attracts attention. This one attracts attention. So certainly, if you know, you would know that they are not part of the system. Uniform, is that Do you get me? No, he's just saying that in a sense, not how many people know that it's not a military uniform? But he, he, he's, he's cladded in, in, a, in a military fatigue. It depends on w which even, unit even, you belong to. Even his shoes. But how would I... No, no, my dear, how would you... No, one I share on social media wearing jeans and something. No, we're told that he belongs to the Ghana Police Service. Because it's on a... I mean, it's a big network like your TV3. Some education should, should be out there. Please, but that I, necessarily is not... Of course, that please. Not, when you were talking, I didn't interrupt No, I was seeking information. No, That's wait. When... when, okay. when this please go ahead. Don't disrupt my thoughts. So the, the point is that even the boots the person is wearing looks like some military gap. Those boots are not sold on the market. Do you understand me? Those boots are specifically for the, um, for the military. So I believe that we need to be careful about some of these things. We need to be... We need to be sure that the right thing is done. When we come to such places, it is more of the police. We need to allow the police to work. All these para security, military people we take to these places, the macho men, it doesn't really help. But the point is also that when the president spoke about um, the people of Aten not voting for someone who will be able to come to him to request you mean he, he, his comment related to a jail somebody who will go to jail so, subsequently no he also said that they should vote for someone who can come to him and talk to him about development fasting that was an unfortunate statement because you see as the moment you 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 hold that sword and make that vow you are for everybody everybody should be able to come to you Everybody should be able to, I mean, interact with you as the president of the nation. So even if it's an NDC person, that person should be able to come, especially when we have a hung parliament. If I was the president, I would rather court the NDC because the MPP are given. They are his people to bring cohesion and peace. He should rather be able to let them come to him and speak because they will tell him as it is, but they are not expecting him to give them any positions or anything. So if he's, it's unfortunate if he says that um, they should vote for somebody who will come to him, who will be able to come to him to Ghana and um, some development projects. Development projects is not, it is a responsibility. It is a responsibility that when you take any seat, it's because you are a custodian of the money of Ghana. If you take something that does not belong to, why then do we say that the people are stealing? What are they stealing? They say that, oh, this government steal corruption. and What are they stealing? Because they, are, they, are, they have money that does not belong to them. And that money should be used for our good. So it does not matter which by CPP and DC, whichever party is in power. If you are in power, immediately you come to power, everybody else is your person. Everybody else 
belongs to you. Everybody else should be able to book an appointment to come and see you as a president. The moment you you decide that you 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 become inward looking and you become nepotic, it means that it is only you and your people. Any other group of people don't mm. matter, and that is very very dangerous. And we need to look at it. It's unfortunate, but whatever it is, for whatever has happened, I always said that one day God will speak. And God spoke, and I always say that let the best man win. And one God, once God speaks, it's very difficult for any man to change it. Akosia, the Kodeo, coordinators of election um, that we have in the country. Mm. And they have m massive experience over the last 23, 4 years. You take a look at their reports, and they particularly cite incidents where there were violent clashes. Around 1 p.m., a convoy of vehicles with MPP occupants occupied by the regional chairman of the Ashanti region, Entry Boisiaku, pursuing a vehicle occupied by NDC supporters. And this is official statement they've issued post the election from a different polling station to DC primary school in Praso. During this pursuit, the occupants of the MPP vehicles proceeded to vandalize and to damage parts of the NDC vehicle, resulting in commotion and disturbance. They also, before then, say violation of voting procedure. Two electorates were apprehended for taking a snapshot of ballot paper after voting. When questioned about the action, they claimed that an unidentified individual had taxed them to take a picture of the marked ballot as proof in return for a monetary reward. They were nearly arrested by security personnel. However, there was an intervention. Now, it says at the Methodist Primary School in Breku, a journalist from one of the station was interviewing electorate who were in a queue to vote, and he was confronted by a purported executive of the MPP for conducting an interview at the polling station. Such incidents, how can we make sure that it doesn't arise in 2024? Roland, really, unfortunately, I don't have that report. Let me, let me send it sure. to you. Send it, to Send it to me. Yes. Maybe but later you can take a look at it. But speak to, to it. I, uh, to speak to it, I mean, you've extracted bits of it. I don't know why the um, Ashanti regional chairman was chasing that particular vehicle. And I'm sure that if you had been privy to this now, if you, uh, today we've had people phone in. If you can call him so he explains what it was. I also um, do not it was know. <laughs> oh. Because that's very rude and inappropriate. Saying that in what language would he Please go ahead. This is TBT. What does it mean? The Ashanti regional minister doesn't speak English. The minister. Ask no, we interviewed it. him that day, please. The minister, yes. right? No. no. The, the, the chairman. The chair. the chairman. chairman. We interviewed him that day. Oh, I, I don't, I <laughs> the, early, the early hours of the voting. <laughs> I, I, I was on air that day. Please go I ahead. You know, I mean, you we have to pay her No, vote. she's been gloating over the fact that um, <laughs> I've seen people voted, and I don't think that they even tune into TBT either. But... Um, let's respect whatever language people want to communicate in. Clearly, he's smart and intelligent enough to be there. And I'm confirming to we party. spoke to him that day. He spoke in English. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. that's good. So he, he had an explanation for that. The, I, no, at I the time, the incident the... hadn't happened. Okay, so I don't know why they were chasing um, supporters in a particular vehicle. Mm. I do not know what the reason would be. But I, I, I don't even want to claim that it might be for a good reason. I, don't, I can't speak to it because I don't know the details of it. Um, when it comes to um, the um, violence issues, there, were a part, there was a particular video that she mentioned as well. So a, a man who took a stone, a rock literally, and was trying to throw it at a, a, a woman. I don't know why he was doing so. Was, I think she said something smart to him. Or I don't even know what the reasons are. But these are the things that come up every now and then. Even at the police station that I was at, one particular lady had gotten into an altercation with a man in the queue. And the man said, um, I think he called a, a certain, well, derogatory term, and she got upset. So I think she tried to hit him or something. Mm -hmm. so, so people were a bit agitated. And she's right when she says all these things. If 
care is not taken, it escalates. That's why we have security presence there to ensure that they tame or they neutralize any situations that go um, overboard. Now, in the calls that have come through concerning um, um, money shared and whatnot, Akamba himself now says, and he and Beatrice have the same storyline that they have the same storyline that people showed up and said they were stranded. But in her narration, she said they were agitated and accosting the original representative and they were upset that they had come to vote. I don't know how you'd come to vote out of your own free will and be upset that you can't go back unless something was promised you. Now, is the terminology of what it is when it comes to the monies. One side is calling it um, transportation. Actually, right. both sides also. No, at this point, she's, she's validated it. The other it. side, the other side says we didn't share. We mobilized. We didn't share money. Okay. But she, yes, um, when you um, and Akamba. Alfred called in to say that they mobilized people with their pragiers and oh, and and um, and other vehicles. And I will find it. Um, would have to at some point agree that yes, there are some people who on the day, no matter what you do. Once they see that you, you're a party operative or a party representative, they're going to come to you to ask for something. Or they're going, they going to insist that you send them money before they move. And that's the, that's the sad nature of our politics now. Both sides, we are all guilty of it. Nobody should run away from it. That mobilization that goes in is all part of the politics. There are people who will tell you, if I don't get that transportation, I'm not going to vote. It's unfair. It doesn't help our democratic process. It makes it... Um, um, to the tokenism becomes a bit, um, it's almost endemic. But there are people who cast their votes. And like Alfred said, the way, there was, a, there was a, um, an invalid who insisted they wanted to vote. In one of the polling station centers, there was a taxi driver that I saw somebody saying, help him, a take him to the center. Sorry, a person with um, disability. Then um, there was also an elderly woman who also wanted to vote at all costs. So there are these considerations that are made. When it comes to... Um, now, the conversation on what messaging went on on the grounds, one of the things that I had a challenge with, you know, was the, the, the insistence that the MPP wanted quasing out of Parliament because um, the government wanted to push an LGBTQ agenda. That, 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 that narrative, that propaganda, that messaging, it's as vile and as evil as you can imagine. And he kept hounding at it. And for some reason, somehow they smack that the Asin people bought into it. And that's why they are happy. What about the message ultimately. by the president that the gentleman will go to jail? The thing about the gentleman going to jail is that when you look at what has preceded before in the same, um, the, the narrative of Abu Sakande in itself, that's one instance, right? He is going to go through a process again. We know the ultimate outcome of that. Mm -hmm. How so do you if, know the ultimate really outcome? Know. Okay, really let, let me not really say the really ultimate outcome of that. It's going to know. I'm saying the ultimate outcome of that because John Mahama said to the people that if we vote for Kwesin, even if he goes to jail, there's going to be another by-election. John Mahama himself said it. In a In a Where? He Asenof. said it to the people. He went door to door. You advertised him going door to door. You, you, you advertised him. You advertised him campaigning morning, on Akosia the ground. Because I've said something very uncomfortable right, for you. Very let, me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me have, let me, let me have, let me, let me have the there. chairman of the MPP for the Ashanti region, oh, okay. um, who is now on the line, Enkriboy Siakom. Mr. Enkriboy Siakom, good morning to you. Good morning. Okay, great. Uh, Kodeo ha has put in its uh, final report that has been issued publicly that at 1 p.m. you and your men were chasing an NDC vehicle on the day. What do you say to that, to that Kodeo report? And also, of course, it's been reported widely in the media as well. So, first and foremost, let me greet everybody and all the listeners also. Uh, you know, uh, I would say no, it's not true. Why uh, not? NDC people brought a lot of metro people to Athenos, and everybody is aware of it. So uh, we were there to protect 
we was there to protect uh, our votes there. This is what I can say. So the person or the court you they should know exactly what happened before they say we did not what, what, what happened for you to say? What happened? Please let me read to you. Perhaps it will give you a better clarification, Mr. It says, yes. and this is Kodeo, and I, I covered my first election as an intern in the year 2000. So I've known Kodeo. It's now led by Kofi. Kofi Ahin, and that's the last page. That's page three. Uh -huh. Kofi Ahin currently leads that, and uh, Ms. Ahin again signed this report. It does say, and you are number three. Your name is cited in point three of the reported incident. It's, 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 Let me read to not, you. Let, let me read to you, Ms. Entribus Yakon, please. Around 1 p.m., a convoy of vehicles with MPP occupants accompanied by the Ashanti Regional Chairman of the MPP, Enkribwe Siakon, Chairman Wuntumi into brackets, pursued a vehicle occupied by NDC supporters from a different polling station to the DC Primary School in Praso, into brackets, located within the electoral area with polling station code blah, blah, blah. During this pursuit, the occupants of the MPP vehicles proceeded to vandalize. Vandalize means you, you destroyed parts of the vehicle and damaged the NDC vehicle, resulting in commotion and disturbance. Why did you do that? Um, my, my brother, anything you, is God give you uh, one lip and give you two eyes and two ears. So if somebody writes something, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean the person has done that. So you cannot say why have you done that? I haven't. I haven't done anything. I haven't done anything. You see, could you they haven't talked to me? They don't so, have to talk to you. They cited an incident. They're, they are independent no, election and I'm monitors. Saying, and, I'm saying it's not, and I'm saying it's not true. If you are citing incident, you see, if you are citing incident, that is one sided. You should engage with the person and ask him. They never ask me. So it's not true. It's not. Okay. It's not true. It's not true. So do you, do you, do you say, per your position, that the CODEO, Coalition of Domestic Election Observers, they are lying. I'm saying that I never destroy any car. I'm saying mm -hmm. I never destroy any car. I never lose anybody. But I'm observer as well as them. So okay. I was going around also to observe what was going on. Mr. Entrepreneur, uh, please answer my question. Do, do, are you saying that CODEO is lying that's all that uh, just you yes or saying, no i'm saying it's not true why why are they want to speak for me i say it's not true what they are telling what we are saying is it's not true it's not true all right thank you it's not true. thank you thank you very much it's, it's not it's not true and they are reporting one-sided it's they they are also one-sided all you right see? so how come and why there? What happened? You see, it's one sided. It's not true. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for the explanation. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. And I completely agree with him because it's not fair to him. You report. Oh, but what is this oh, where you don't want to meet us? Let him conclude. Let him conclude. Let him. 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 Let You've seen somebody pursuing a vehicle and oh, you, ca you, you literally label all the people in the vehicle. As to what he was doing or what was going on, it wasn't captured, but it, it paints a certain impression. He, he said he so was Kodeo an observer. So Kodeo is lying? No, Kodeo is not, um, um, hasn't been factual. 
So that point should 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 be should have been captured as well as to what he was doing, or maybe they felt that he shouldn't even be the one to pursue said vehicle. But the question is, why were they? Why was he doing it? And clearly, he doesn't even remember that something of that nature occurred. So it couldn't even uh, um, it couldn't even have been the case. Okay. Now, so, so so election violence, and this has been captured by an independent monitoring body. So let me say that this morning, I can understand Akusha is traumatized. And of course, she's recovering from a shock because they were led to believe a, that your own seat. How that can I they, be traumatized? They were like led that? to believe that. But the consistent statement, and for that matter, reckless by the president, Akusia, and all other previous and assigned, that obviously Mr. Quayson will go to jail. If after yesterday they have not reflected, slept over it, and thought it through. Then the MPP should not be handling but funds. What is more reckless than Joe Mahama? I think saying that, that even when, if he goes when, to jail, there will be another by election. You see, what I is think more reckless that, than that? You made that statement. Yes, he okay. made that. Please, it's okay. Can I justify have my time? that? Please. I want the justification for that let's, statement. Let's, let's, I, I don't, you, you can't I don't, talk about the president in that statement and expect me to look, so, so, look so, away so, when you are when she doesn't understand. I don't want to be a lawyer. She can make such reckless things. But he said, please, can you? Joe Mahama is not a lawyer. Can you? Please, can you make it? Please, Akosia. Please mute Akosia's mic for me. Please, please go ahead. Yeah, the the girl girl is sticking it to you. you think I am saying that please justify the claim that he please, said please, please that go ahead. even if he goes Akosia. to jail, there'll be another by election. That's what she Akosia. should speak to, not what the president said. So, so when you ask Akosia to speak to the Kodio, she couldn't speak to it. Because it was the she first one seeing the report. She had to go in. I didn't put the report anything. together. I thought you So why should I speak to, to it when I have seen Akosia, it? please. Looking nice alone is not enough. Please Clearly, looking, being a lawyer Please. is not enough. It doesn't <laughs> guarantee common manners. sense. Speak to Please the issue that manners. he said that if he goes to jail, there will be another. Please. I agree. We are not offended. I agree. Akosia, I agree. Please. Why are you I'm not offended. Akosia, please. I'm not Akosia, please. But you were not, you, you didn't jump in when <laughs> no, the, another you, comment you, was made. So I'm saying that the NPP should not rope the NDC into the incompetence and the shenanigans that they did displayed in Asin North. What happened in Asin North is that the NDC was extremely vigilant. We had a plan, we had a strategy, and we have executed it. Now, I thought Chairman Woon to me would be man enough to own up to the violence because I was present. This is not hearsay. He brought his macho men, and when they came, they saw two guys at that polling station they asked the guys to kneel down and held their guns up. It was after that that they shot at the cars. I thought this morning he would be man he enough. He said he doesn't remember. He would not remember because I thought he would be man enough. What they didn't expect in Asin North is that they didn't expect an NDC prepared to meet them from the polling stations to where they have planned violence to everywhere. And I can promise them that they should watch out because I have said that the MPP cannot win any election in Ghana without rigging. We, we, yesterday, the EC officials was tearing, I mean, on Tuesday when the election was on the election day. On the election day, yeah. The EC officials was giving three, three ballot sheets. One EC official was just tearing three of the ballot sheets and giving it to someone to go and vote. The vigilance of the NDC exposed that. What would they want to record over voting in our stronghold? I am saying that we went into that election prepared to meet them and mitigate any violence. We went into that election with a superior strategy. Let them not paint the impression that there was vote buying. They just only paid more than us. We didn't have that resource. We didn't have that resource. What we had was a credible party with a candidate who is loved, a candidate who has the people of Asin North in place. What we had was a message for the people of Asin North. And thankfully, we met a swing region, a region that you have held the seats more than, I mean, a constituency that you have held the seats more than us. And the people were just descending. They read in between the line. They stood the ground, and they gave the NDC the mandate. And I should say that. All these conversations mm. about violence monetization. and monetization.
How do, is, how do we clean this up before 2020? No, we, we need to 24. clean it up. We need to clean up because it is even in our interest as a party in opposition. We could never fight them. A classical example I've given you is them using money to book hotels. An empty room. They couldn't even get their party people to come and occupy the hotels to campaign. But we, we had a lot that of NDC people who were willing to sleep anywhere on empty stomachs campaigning, and I am so proud that we put our differences aside, we forge ahead, we had the strong and credible message, we sold our message, we were prepared to meet them boot for boot, and if you are watching me as an NDC person, whether you're a branch executive, whether you're a party executive, or you are a member of the NDC, it is a duty to rescue this nation because the profligacy, the, the display and flow of money, monies which could have been used to change the lives of people, which were just being distributed as though we didn't have problems again. Some of your branch chairmen and branch executives don't even have food to eat. You took that money, be, put it at the boot of ministers, Went to a not to share for voters. They have voted That's against you. Come and explain to your foot soldiers lie. why you cannot sort them out, why they cannot find lie. jobs, and you want to equalize. If the NDC has they money, we will use it to reorganize our party, to mobilize and rescue this nation. Because enough of the incompetence, enough of the arrogance, enough of the pride, enough of the prof profligacy. And so on this note, I want to thank the people of Asin North that conscience prevailed. I want to thank the people of Asin North that they stood their grounds and voted for us. And finally, they are saying that the campaign about LGBTQ is evil. Nanado said that it is sure bound to happen. Nanado said that it is bound to happen. He has one year and six months to lead office. Under whose presidency is it bound to happen? So why should we reconscientize the people? Under whose presidency? Is it when he leaves office that it will be bound to happen or it will be under him? We campaigned, we had the message. All you had was that Mr. Quayson will go to jail. The people of Asino says that even in jail, we will vote. They increase the NDC's victory from 55 to 57%. We are grateful and we call on Ghanaians to replicate same. Thank you, Asin North. We are grateful. Thank you, Beatrice. Thank you, Beatrice. Uh, so now, if I go by the Code, if if I go by the Codeo reports, we have incidents of violence, heckling of ordinary voters, and then the media is in the myth. Um, what lies ahead, and what should be done we for need twenty? To deal with it. I mean, yes. This is a for 2024, because it's just uh, a year, a year away. Eight people. We don't have any. Eight eight people. Eight we don't have any report on it. It's just been pushed under the carpet. We are going to another election. We just had a by-election, and the same symptoms are showing. We need to find out because why does these things happen when the police is also there? What were they doing there? They did a good work, but these things shouldn't happen. If they are there, it should not happen. So we need to have an evaluation and have a conversation around violence. Number two, EC2, they should start doing some good work, some sensitization and education on voters, on how to vote. Because how can you have 456 poll ballots? It is even more than the third candidate. What the third candidate got? 456, LPG got 87. So we need to really talk about it. 456, yeah. they yeah. need to yeah. educate the voters yeah. on how to vote. Well, half of, half of violence, if we are ready and we are serious, we will eradicate it. How can we do that? Somebody has to be punished. People have to be punished. Nine, eight people died. No, nobody. There's not one person who has been named. Not one. After three years, we don't know what has happened. So if we start punishing people and also making the police responsible when they go to these places, it will help us. Um, Roland, I also find it a bit, I don't want to use a, uh, this is my president, a bit interesting that the person you said has gone to jail has won an election and you are congratulating him. The, pers the president has congratulated uh, Jesse Grayson for his victory. I saw it on your crawlers. So you have, you have said that the person is going to jail. 
and now you have congratulated him. We should watch some of the things that we say when we are on political platforms. Um, How would you that, describe his statements before? He, he, you know, he congratulated the new the National Democratic Congress on its victory. He didn't spell out Chris's ah, name. No, but no. National Democratic Congress, who is The NDC has who, who, won a seat. No, who is... Right. I think it's a public simple. statement. No, yes. who, 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 who is representing them? Is it no crazy? Is it in a vacuum? <laughs> or, or is it is it some monkey sitting there? No, it's a human being. Oh, and his name is Jachi Kwesin. Do you get me? It's a human being. His name is Jachi Kwesin. And he represents NDC. NDC is not in a vacuum. So if he, he congratulates the NDC, a human being made them win. But you are saying this same human being is going to jail. So how do you congratulate somebody? Who, 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 do you think, do you think that statement by the president polarized the atmosphere? Which one? Oh, I mean, those statements, yes, on political platform, but you see, he's the president. When he gets there, he shouldn't behave like um, politics right. as usual. Mm. He should be very measured in what he says. I mean, we all love him, but some of the things that he says, he should be measured. All right. Thank you very much. Nanea Jantua is the general secretary of the CPP, and then also um, the deputy CEO for the National Youth Authority, Akusha Minu, thank you very much as well. Beatrice Anand, thank you. Yeah. The we're taking now. a break. Again, we <laughs> have a great interaction with um, a, a great musician who has an extraordinary voice. So we'll have that as well. And then also, please get interactive as always. We're taking a break. We will be right back.